Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let me 
let me here so uh, 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 the we will de design the way how you have to receive all these items so here so first track is to have the error sum square so e square i equal to 1 to n is equal to summation uh, y minus y head uh, y head so which is nothing but beta 0 head uh, plus beta 1 head x1 plus beta 2 head sorry thank you beta 2 head uh, x2 okay so this is uh, this is otherwise like this so this is squares i equal to 1 so what we will do we will simplify so which is nothing but summation y minus beta 0 heads minus beta 1 uh, head x1 minus beta 2 head x2 then whole squares i equal to 1 to n so this is what we call it is summation e square so, so summation e square is this much so now this is the this is the starting uh, process through which we have to minimize the error sum square so now we, we will move how we have to manage minimize the error sum square so by the way uh, so there are three parameters so that means summation e square equal to summation y minus beta 0 head minus beta 1 uh, head x1 minus beta 2 head x2 whole square so, okay i equal to 1 to n this is also i equal to 1 to n all right so now our objective is to get beta 0 head uh, beta 1 head then beta 2 head okay so this these are the three specific objectives okay there are three specific objectives to head the to have the estimated value of beta 0 head uh, estimated value of beta 1 head and the estimated value of beta 2 heads so now uh, accordingly we have to apply the OLS technique and uh, the way we will minimize then obviously we have to touch the necessary condition and the sufficient condition the necessary condition is nothing but the error sums uh, means we have to differentiate the error sum square with respect to beta 0 head beta 1 head and beta 2 head then uh, then we have to go for the solution of these three equations and by the way we will get beta 0 head beta 1 head and beta 2 heads let me ha uh, explain how is it all about so now so first uh, first condition is first order necessary condition is that so d summation e squares by d beta 0 head is equal to 0 d beta 0 head is equal to 0 then if you go for simplifications so then obviously uh, it is nothing but 2 into summations 2 into summation uh, okay 2 into summation y minus beta 0 head uh, x1 minus uh, uh, sorry sorry beta 0 uh, head uh, beta 0 head x beta 0 head and beta 1 head x1 minus beta 2 head x2 okay so this is beta 0 head so this is beta 0 head means minus 1 has to be multiplied okay if we simplify then d summation d summation e square by d beta 0 head is equal to uh, some uh, uh, means it, it should be equal to 0 then if we uh, you know further simplify then it is nothing but summation y is equal to uh, n beta 0 head minus uh, no uh, it will obviously plus because summation y is coming this side so uh, beta 0 uh, beta 1 head summation x1 plus beta 2 head summation x2 okay so this is this is equation number 1 okay this is equation number 1 so now now next step is we have to solve d summation e square by d beta 1 head so d summation e square by d beta, beta 1 head means it is 2 summation uh, 2 summation uh, into uh, y minus beta 0 head uh, minus beta 1 head x1 minus beta 2 head x2 into into this is beta 1 head so it is minus x1 minus x1 is equal to 0 is equal to 0 so now if you simplify this particular equation so then we will have summation y x summation y x uh, is uh, no it is summation y x1 okay summation y x1 is equal to 
बीटा जीरो हेड समेशन एक्स वन प्लस बीटा वन हेड समेशन एक्स वन स्क्वेयर प्लस बीटा टू हेड समेशन एक्स वन एंड एक्स टू ओके सो दिस इज हाउ दि सेकेंड यू नो सेकेंड सल्यूशन फर दिस पार्टिकुलर मिनिमाइजेशन सो दिस इज इक्वेशन नंबर टू ओके दिस इज इक्वेशन नंबर टू सो नाउ नाउ वी हैव टू डिफरेंशिएट विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू बीटा टू हेड सो दैट मीन्स डी समेसन डी समेसन इज केयर बाई डी बीटा टू हेड इज इक्वल टू टू समेसन वाई माइनस बीटा जीरो हेड माइनस बीटा वन हेड एक्स वन माइनस बीटा टू हेड एक्स टू इन टू माइनस माइनस एक्स टू माइनस एक्स टू विच इज इक्वल टू जीरो दिस इज थर्ड इक्वेशन सो नाउ उल सीम्प्लीफाई दिस थर्ड इक्वेशन देन उल हेव समेसन वाई ए वाई एक्स टू समेसन वाई एक्स टू इज इक्वल टू बीटा जीरो हेड समेसन समेसन बीटा जीरो हेड समेसन एक्स टू समेसन एक्स टू प्लस बीटा वन हेड समेसन एक्स वन एक्स टू बीटा वन हेड समेसन एक्स वन एक्स टू प्लस बीटा टू हेड समेसन एक्स टू स्क्वेर्स ओके सो दिस इज दिस इज थर्ड इक्वेशन दिस इज थर्ड इक्वेशन ओके सो नाउ व्हाट विल डू सो द प्रोसेस इज इन दिस इन दिस मिनिमाइजेशन बाय ओएलएस टेक्निक सो स्टेप वन प्रोसेस इज डी समेसन ई स्क्वेयर बाय डी बीटा जीरो हेड इज इक्वल टू जीरो डी समेसन ई स्क्वेयर बाय डी बीटा वन हेड इज इक्वल टू जीरो एंड डी समेसन ई स्क्वेयर बाय डी बीटा टू हेड इज इक्वल टू जीरो सो नाउ इफ यू सिंप्लीफाई देन वी हैव थ्री डिफरेंट इक्वेशंस करेस्पोंडिंग टू बीटा जीरो हेड बीटा वन हेड एंड बीटा टू हेड्स सो नाउ इफ यू लि क्लोव टूगेदर सो दे दिस पर्टिकुलर दिस पर्टिकुलर प्रॉब्लम विल बी इन द फॉर्म ऑफ थ्री इंटू थ्री फॉर्मेट सो दैट इज दिस साइमल्टेनियस इक्वेशन ऑफ ऑर्डर थ्री वेयर देर आर थ्री पैरामीटर्स एंड देर आर थ्री इक्वेशन सो दिस सिस्टम इज वेरी कन्सिस्टेंट and we can able to get a solution so what is this particular structure the structure is here if i'll club all these three equation then it will be coming like this summation y equal to n beta 0 head and plus beta 1 head summation x1 uh, plus beta 2 head summation x2 okay so then summation x1 y is equal to beta 0 head summation x1 प्लस बीटा वन हेड समेसन एक्स वन स्क्वेयर प्लस बीटा टू हेड समेसन एक्स वन एक्स टू ओके सो दे थर्ड इक्वेशन इज समेसन एक्स टू वाई इज इक्वल टू बीटा जीरो हेड समेसन एक्स टू प्लस बीटा वन हेड समेसन एक्स वन स्क्वेयर प्लस बीटा टू हेड समेसन सरी दिस इज एक्स वन एक्स टू दिस इज एक्स वन एक्स टू and this is summation x2 squares okay so this is this is nothing but uh, the, you know 3 into 3 equations so we can also we can also put in <coughs> like uh, this particular structure we can uh, write like this y equal to x beta plus uh, x beta uh, simply uh, you can say x beta only uh, y into uh, x beta okay so what is uh, y here so y represents Uh, y represents here yes. summation y summation x1 y summation x2 y okay so this is y and corresponding to this y corresponding this to y x represents x represents n summation x1 summation x2 then summation x1 summation x1 squares summation x1 x2 then summation x2 summation x2 x1 summation x1 square so this is x and beta consists of beta beta 0 he, beta 0 head beta 1 head and beta 2 head okay so now <coughs> so this is nothing but y equal to x beta so if we multiply x inverse both the sides so then uh, then we will get the solutions beta equal to x inverse y okay x inverse y so that means 
So we will simplify this particular 3 into 3 model in a matrix format and it is easy to handle this particular problem. The entire structure is almost all same now like bivariate econometric model. So in the bivariate econometric models we had 2 into 2 systems. So where our objective is to get only you know alpha beta or if we uh, you know reduce it uh, this trivariate to bivariate then the two parameters are beta 0 head and beta 1 head. Okay. So now uh, in order to simplify all these procedures, so how we will get all these equations? So now uh, it's, uh, uh, if I will simplify then I will get beta 0 head is equal to uh, uh, the matrix summation y summation x1 summation x2 okay then uh, summation x1 y then uh, summation x1 y summation x1 square then summation x1 x2 then summation x2 y then summation x1 x2 then summation x2 square so this this is beta 0 head uh, beta 0 head equal to this divided by a uh, matrix a so a, a is nothing but uh, a n summation x1 summation x2 summation x1 summation x2 summation x1 x2 sorry this is x uh, x1 squares uh, summation x1 square this is summation x1 x2 this is summation x2 x1 this is summation x2 squares so this is how beta 0 uh, uh, beta 0 head value so now uh, beta 1 head beta 1 head is equal to uh, n summation x1 summation x2 then summation y summation x1 y summation x2 y then summation x2 summation x1 x2 then summation x2 squares ok so this divided by uh, n summation x1 summation x2 summation x1 summation x1 squares summation x1 x2 then summation x2 summation x2 x1 then summation x2 squares ok so this is what all about beta 1 head ok similarly we will get beta 2 heads so uh, beta 2 head is equal to beta 2 head equal to n summation x1 summation x2 then summation x1 summation x1 squares summation x1 x2 then summation y summation x1 y then summation x2 y ok this divided by n summation x1 summation x2 summation x1 summation x2 summation x1 square summation x1 x2 then summation x2 x1 then summation x uh, uh, x2 squares ok so this is the beta 2 value ok this is the beta 2 value in order to simplify the entire procedures so we have to apply the you know trick how to get the quick solutions so far as a, you know uh, this is how we have to derive the process to get the beta 0 head beta 1 head and beta 2 head you know uh, so far as a classroom problem is concerned it is required to know how it is coming exactly the value of beta 0 head beta 1 head and beta 2 head but when we will handle this particular problem through any statistical softwares then you just you know uh, uh, your uh, you know job is very simple just you have to give a command what is the dependent variable and who are the independent variables ok so here we are writing you know y x1 and x2 for our simplicity only so that the uh, you know it is very eye catching and it can easy to understand easy, easy to justify or easy to represent but you know when we have a practical problems any uh, any finance problem or any business problem so obviously your problem setup is all about with respect to three variables for, the, for this particular trivariate econometry modeling so now uh, what you have to do in this tri uh, in this particular format if there are three variables and three different names are there for instance uh, last class we have discussed uh, the uh, uh, when there is a bivariate models so we, t we restricted our model to say stock price versus foreign exchange okay so that means we are very much interested to know how forex influence the stock price keeping stock price is a dependent variable and forex is an independent variable so now 
we will add another extra variable in this particular uh, nexus between this stock price and foreign exchange. So, let us assume that there is another variable called as a inflation which can influence the stock price. Okay. So, now we practically will take that let us say y is a stock price, okay. y is a stock price, then x1 is nothing but uh, forex, okay. then x2 is nothing but you can say inflations. Inflation. So, here our agenda is so the stock price stock price is it has to be integrated with integrated with the forex okay integrated with the forex okay then uh, inflation okay so i will call it inf okay so now uh, this uh, this idea is here so to know how much influence forex for a, forex influence on a so stock price and how much uh, infl inflation influence on stock price so this is how the this is you know this is one of this typical examples under trivariate modeling because you know stock price is a component which can be influenced by multi number of variables and at a particular point of time it is not possible to identify or it is not possible to represent so many variables altogether so with respect to our specific problem or you know uh, so far as a trivariate econometric modeling is concerned we are just restricted the stock prices versus forex and inflation so now, uh, if you use the statistical softwares, then obviously in three different columns you must have information. Okay, so like this. So uh, uh, we have y, x1, and x2. So corresponding, we have already uh, uh, you know identify what is y, what is x1, and what is x2. So now you must have information like y1, y2 up to yn. Similarly, x1, x2 up to xn then uh, x uh, sorry x11 x21 uh, uh, x x11 x21 x, xn1 uh, otherwise you can put x11 x12 x1n so that is better so this is also x21 x22 up to x2n okay this is how the representation is all about so that means we must have a sample information with respect to stock price with respect to forex and with respect to inflation so now we like to know what is the variation of you know forex and stock inflation on stock price of this particular you can say sample observations so now when we handle this particular problem through any statistical software then uh, in each uh, there are three columns in a particular setup so for uh, uh, three column may be stock price you know forex and inflation so there is you no know, hard and fast rules uh, uh, that uh, you have to start with the first stock price entry then inflation entry then forex and in forex entry so it is not hard and fast rules you take any variable entry uh, in sequence then uh, since we have already designed here models where stock price is the dependent variable and forex inflation are independent variables then obviously so we have to when we will go for this statistical software use then we have to just give a command what is the a, a dependent variable so if we will give indication to stock price dependent variable then obviously other two variables we have to put in an independent variable structure then all altogether you automatically get the beta 0 head component beta 1 head component and beta 2 head component so now beta 0 uh, the estimated value of beta, that is these are all estimated values of beta uh, all beta like beta 0 head beta 1 head and beta 2 head so now here beta 0 head is represented as a supporting component that is what we will call is a intercept in but two variate uh, bivariate models so x beta 1 is the influence of you know let us assume that x1 is for x then it is influence supporting component uh, uh, you know for x to uh, stock price similarly beta 2 head is the influence of inflation to you can say stock price that means beta 1 beta 2 is the weightage factor the influence factor to the stock price so now uh, this is very easy when we handle the softwares but in the time being when we are in the classroom problems so you you may not allow uh, you may not be allowed to uh, you know uh, go through any statistical softwares of course what you can do at best you can use excel sheet for you know uh, for your simplicity so the uh, so far as a classroom problem is concerned so there are two ways you have to handle very quickly some tricks you have to apply and second thing either you can use supporting component excel sheet or you can say another supporting component say uh, any scientific calculators okay so let us assume that you are in the classroom 
then how quickly you can uh, uh, finish this particular process. So, we have already discussed what is the entire structure of beta 0 head, beta 1 head and beta 2 head and further simplify to make it more quickly. So, we will uh, transfer this structure into other different formats. Okay. Let, let, us, uh, let us highlight that issue first, then we will uh, move to further uh, structures. So, here, so what we have received three equations summation y, a summation y equal to n beta 0 head plus beta 1 head summation x 1 plus beta 2 head summation x 2, then summation x 1 y equal to beta 0 head summation x 1 plus beta 2 beta 1 head summation x 1 squares plus beta 2 head summation x 1 x 2. Okay. Similarly, summation x 2 y is equal to beta 0 head summation x 2 plus beta 1 head summation x 2 x 1 plus beta 2 head summation x 2 squares. Okay. So, this is how we, we have three different equations. Okay. This is all together three different equations. Okay. So, now what we have to do? Uh, uh, like you know in the vibrate, uh, vibrate regression models. So, we have also two, two equations because there are two parameters in that particular structures. So, what we did uh, in the vibrate structures. So, in the first equation you divide n both the sides then you know uh, very easy way you will get this uh, uh, you know supporting component intercept uh, uh, you know estimate value. So, that is bit, uh, here beta 0 head in that case it is alpha head. So, what you have to do? So, you just here you have, you have to just you know divide n both the sides. Okay. So, now if you divide both the sides then summation y by n equal to n beta 0 head divided by n plus beta 1 head summation x 1 by n plus beta 2 head summation x 2 by n. Okay. You know here n represents number of sample observations. So, now if you simplify then this summation y by n is equal to y bar, okay. y bar this n n cancel. So, it will give you beta 0 head plus beta 1 head summation x 1 x 1 by n is nothing but x 1 bar. Okay. Then beta 2 head is summation x 2 by n is nothing but x 2 bars. Okay. So, this is how the is a, you know transformation. So, now we need beta 0 head. So, beta 0 head is nothing but y bar minus beta 1 head x 1 bar minus beta 2 head x 2 bars. Okay. Beta 2 head x 2 bars. Uh, 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 this is we will get beta 0 head. Uh, then what we have to do? Uh, we need to calculate uh, the beta 1 head and beta 2 head. So, now if we put this particular equation in equation number 2, now using this particular structure in equation number 1 and equation number 2 and you simplify this particular equation 2 and equation 3, you will get simply summation x 1 y is equal to uh, beta 1, beta 1 head summation x 1 squares plus beta 2 head summation x 1 x 2. Okay. Similarly, summation x 2 y is equal to beta 1 head summation x 2 uh, x 2 x 1 plus beta 2 head summation x 2 squares. Okay. So, there is a difference here. This is another structure, this is another uh, means this is first structure and this is second structure. So, in this particular structure, the variables are in deviation format. That means, here x where x 1 x 1 represents x 1 minus x 1 bar. Okay. Then <coughs> x 2 so, uh, uh, so deviation x 2 is nothing but x 2 minus x 2 bar. So, similarly you, uh, with the help of this we can calculate the summation x 1 square that means it is nothing but x 1 into x 1. So, similarly if we leave, multiply x 1 and x 2 you will get the uh, summation x 1 and x 2. So, that means what is the speciality is that so, when there are uh, means when you are in the classrooms and you have a you have a trivariate problem. So, first agenda is to have the simple structure means you have x 1 x 2 x 3. So, sorry we, you have y x 1 and x 2. So, you, you very quickly you can have summation y summation x 1 summation x 2. Okay. So, like this okay. just I will highlight here. So, now you have the sample setup like this y equal to 
y x1 and x2. So, corresponding to y, you have y1, y2 up to yn, this is corresponding to x1. So, you have x11, x, uh, x12, then x1n, ok. So, corresponding x2, so you have you have x2, uh, x21, x22, then x2n, ok. So, now quickly what you have to do, you will find out here summation y, summation x1, then summation x2 and obviously n must be known, known to you, ok. Then, uh, uh, then again very quickly you have, you must have another column x1 square, then you have must have column x2 squares, then you have x1 and x2, ok. So, these are the essential requirement. So, obviously there is a some uh, items here. So, if you really process all these items, then there is a this gap, guess, gap can be filled up by this information only. So, if you really, uh, if you really put all these in Excel sheet, very quickly you have to uh, uh, receive all these items. So, now what is the, uh, what is the uh, idea behind this uh, setup? So, idea behind this setup is to have this is summation x1 squares, ok, then uh, summation x2 squares, uh, ok, then this is uh, this is uh, you know uh, this is not x2 bar this is x2 squares then this is summation x1 and x2 ok. So, now uh, either you have this first then you transfer into deviation format like you know summation uh, we have summation y square uh, like this summation y square equal to summation y square minus n y bar squares ok. So, like you know some summation x square equal to summation x square minus n x bar squares ok. So, this is what we have already done in the case of bivariate analysis. So, similarly we can also have here. So, here instead of you know here we have the format summation x 1 squares. So, x 1 squares. So, it is nothing but summation x 1 squares minus n a, a n and uh, this is x 1 ok. x uh, summation a x 1 square minus n into x 1 bar squares ok this is how we have to derive ok. Similarly, summation x 2 square is nothing but summation x 2 squares minus n uh, x 2 bar square. So, this is how we can transfer all these issues. Otherwise, the second procedure is you you have another columns like you know this is small x 1, this is small x 2, this is you know x 1 x 1 and x 2 alright this is x 1 and x 2. So, this uh, this you know this this you take x 1 square this you will take x 2 square that means it is the question of x 1 into x 1 x 2 into x 2 then x 1 into x 2. So, this x 1 is nothing but x 1 minus uh, this min, this that means this is nothing but x 1 minus x 1 bar. So, now you have to create a column small x 1 that is deviation x 1 which is uh, nothing but the difference between x 1 minus x 1 bar. So, you first uh, create that particular column, then again uh, that column if you multiply it uh, with the same element again, then you will get x 1 square. Similarly, you will create a x 2 small x 2, then you multiply again with that small x 2, you will get x 2 square. So, now you have to multiply x 1 small x 1 into small x 2, you will get the sequence x 1 and x 2, then you get the summation uh, uh, of all these items. So, the moment you will get all these items, then the problem is a little bit simpler. So, now, so for the uh, as usual in the bivariate structure, in this trivariate structure, it is better to have first beta 1 head and beta 2 head, then you uh, use that beta 1 head, beta 2 head in first equation where beta, uh, beta 0 head equal to y bar minus beta 1 head x 1 bar and min minus beta 2 head x 2 bar. So, the moment you will use beta 1 uh, head and beta 2 head in that particular equation, so you can able to get the beta 0 head. So, the first and prime condition in this particular process is to have the beta 1 head and beta 2 head. So, now if you will simplify the deviation format, then you know the beta 0 head calculation is a little bit more easier. So, now if you will apply that particular equation means this particular setup is here. So, if you will simplify this particular structure, then ultimately, so beta 1 head, beta 1 head is equal to Mm, summation uh, summation x 1 y summation x 2 y then summation x 1 x 2 then summation x 2 square. So, this divide by uh, summation x 1 square summation x 1 x 2 
then summation x2 x1 and summation x2 square so this is how the derivation of beta 1 head similarly beta 2 head is equal to summation x1 square summation x2 x1 then summation x1 y summation x2 y okay so this divide by as usual summation x1 square summation x1 x2 summation x2 x1 then summation x2 squares okay so this is beta 2 heads so now uh, here obviously uh, summation that means the in the note you, you have to write like this summation x1 y is equal to summation uh, x1 minus x1 bar minus x1 bar into o, o y minus y bar this is how you will get the summation x uh, x1 y or you have to apply the uh, deviation formula okay so directly you can assess so that means uh, so you have actually y x1 and x2 this is what we call it original information and can be represented in the form of capital y capital x1 and capital x2 okay so then uh, if you don't like this deviation format or you could not re able to remember this uh, deviation format so uh, in excel sheet you create a, a you know three other variables like small y small x1 and small x2 so small y is represent here deviation format so small y represents y my capital y minus capital y bar similarly small x, x1 represents the deviation of x1 so that is a, a capital x1 minus a x a capital x1 bar okay similarly for x2 so it is deviation x2 so it is the difference between x2 capital minus x2 bar capital so then you have three different columns x1 bar deviation of x1 bar deviation of x2 bar uh, sorry deviation of x1 deviation of x2 and deviation of y so now uh, as per this requirement of this particular structure so you you have to you have to calculate uh, or you have to uh, uh, you know add another columns uh, sequentially so that is uh, x1 into y is another column x1 and x2 is another column then x1 square is another column then x2 square is another column then x2 y so now once you have these columns then finally you take a summation of all these columns then uh, accordingly apply you will be you get the you know final matrix then uh, after that if you solve that particular matrix you can able to know what is beta 1 head beta 2 head and using this beta 1 head and beta 2 heads you will get this you can say beta 0 head beta 0 head equal to y bar minus beta 1 uh, beta 1 head x1 bar minus beta 2 head x2 bars okay so x1 x1 bar x2 bars you can directly uh, you know assess from the original samples because it is summation x1 by n and summation x2 by n okay so now so once you follow this estimation process and after that getting this you know beta 0 head beta 1 head and beta 2 head so now we are a, you know position or you, we, we, next you know step we have to represent the uh, information about the estimated model so so how you have to represent the complete information of the estimated model so no as usual you know bivariate structures so here the moment you will get the estimated model here's like this okay so y y head equal to beta 0 head plus beta 1 head x1 plus beta 2 head beta 2 head x2 so this is our this is our estimated model where beta 0 is followed is uh, beta 0 is followed by this equation and beta 1 head followed by this this uh, uh, you know matrix and beta 2 head is followed by this particular matrix okay so now after getting all these you know uh, values estimated values for beta 0 head beta 1 and beta 2 head so then again uh, uh, you like to go for its testing so that is what we call it the reliability testing so that means here again our agenda is to know whether this particular estimated model is the best fitted or or not so now to know the best fitted model or you can say good estim uh, estimated models so now we have to go for reliability test so now there are two different uh, test here so one test is with respect to specification test and another is, uh, related to goodness fit test okay so that means uh, the structure is like this 
so the moment uh, the moment you will get like uh, get this equation y head y head equal to beta 0 head plus beta 1 head x 1 plus beta 2 head x 2 so then your objective is to know whether this is significant this is significant or this is that means here we like to know whether they are significant okay significant so that means significant is a question mark here so we like to test whether the the you know uh, parameters uh, obtained by using the information and techniques uh, are significant or not okay so that means so the moment so there are in fact there are two specific objectives first objective is to know the uh, significance of estimated parameters and second objective is to know the overall fitness of the model okay so that that means so far as a uh, um, best fit model is concerned best fitted model best fitted model uh, best fitted models you have to you have to know the best fitted model you have to go for reliability reliability testing okay reliability testing of the reliability testing means with respect to this estimated models okay so now reliability testing has a two different specification here one is called as a uh, spec, uh, specification test specification test with respect to parameters uh, specification test and another is called as a overall overall fitness test okay overall fitness uh, test overall fitness test so this specification test this particular structure indicates the uh, significance of the parameters okay specification uh, uh, test objective is to judge significance significance of the parameters okay significance of the parameters then uh, in the case of overall fitness of the models here the objective is to know the overall uh, overall fitness overall fitness of the model okay so this means uh, uh, this is otherwise known as actually it's not overall fitness of the model it's a goodness fit models in fact instead of putting overall fitness test it's you can say goodness of fit test okay goodness of fit test so that means we like to observe here overall overall uh, uh, overall fitness of the model overall fitness of the models okay overall fitness of the model so this is how the second objective of a uh, 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 secondary objective of this particular uh, you know uh, uh, reliability testing so now suppose significance of parameter is concerned so like our bivariate uh, setup so we have to apply here t statistics and again uh, you know in the case of the uh, uh, overall fitness of the model we have to use f statistics okay so now this is this you need the t statistics and this you need f statistics okay so before we highlight the entire structure of this specification test and overall fitness of the models let me first uh, highlight the two different tables one table related to the estimated values okay that means estimated information about all these parameters and second uh, table is that is ANOVA table so that is which means that will indicate the overall status of the model or overall fitness of the model so now here the estimated information will give you the indication about the uh, you know exact influence of that particular variable to the dependent variable that means what is the weightage of x1 on y and what is the weightage of x2 on y and in the same times we have to see uh, whether x1 the influence of x1 on y is statistically significant and that is observed through beta 1 head and similarly in the case of x2 what is the influence of x2 on, on y is it significant or not so that is you know observed through beta 2 coefficient means significance of beta 2 coefficient so now we have to see how quickly they are significant or you know what extent they are significant so that means we uh, we, we we have to design in such a way or we have to restructure in such a way that the parameters should be statistically significant at the highest level that we can say that it is one percent so that means the moment we have that type of objective or a specification then obviously the overall fitness of the model that is R represented by r square and followed by adjusted r square and tested by f statistic should be also 
statistically significant at a oh, 1 percent level. So, that means, the in the case of trivariate econometry modeling. So, we expect that the way we will design that particular estimated, we expect uh, that the parameters with respect to beta 0 head, beta 1 head, beta 2 head should be statistically significant at least at 1 percent level and in the same time the overall fitness of the model judged by R square and uh, tested by F should be also statistically significant at 1 percent. If that is the case, then you know that uh, that trivariate model is you can say uh, can be considered as a best fitted model and can be applied or utilized for forecasting or policy use. So, now to go all these details about the specification, let me highlight here what is the estimated information about this trivariate econometric modeling. That means, what, what sort of things we need to have to go for this reliable test uh, of uh, with respect to parameters and with respect to the overall fitness of the model. So, let me highlight what is the sequence or what are the means way we have to represent the final structure of the estimated model. So, uh, uh, you know uh, if you do not like to put it in a tabular format, you can put it in a also uh, model format or you can say equation format and followed by it has to be structured in such a way that the entire tabular information uh, means the entire estimated information can be you can say uh, judge or establish through the equation uh, either through the equation or through the tables. So, uh, depending upon your you know interest or you know choice or uh, observation. So, you have to use any one. So, that is not a hard and fast rule, but the uh, structure or sequence, uh, sequence or you can say the present uh, representation of all these information should be very systematic and you know uh, as usual uh, it will follow this structure and setup. So, now y head is equal to uh, beta 0 head plus beta 1 head x 1 plus beta 2 head x 2. Okay. So, now this is the estimated model which we have derived from the original econometric models y equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 plus the u error component. After you know process or appli application of OLS technique, we have received this beta 0 head, beta 1 head and beta 2 head, where beta 0 head has a some uh, um, statistical formula, beta 1 head has some statistical formula and beta 2 head has some statistical formula, which we have already discussed. So, now how we have to do to go for means how we have to go for this reliability part. So, that means uh, in the first uh, uh, suppose the reliability of uh, reliability testing is concerned with respect to parameters, then obviously, we need to know what is the variance of all these parameters. Okay. So, you know uh, we have discussed couple of days back the uh, term called as a blue best linear unbiased estimators. Okay. So, the term called as a blue best linear unbiased estimators. Okay. So, that means whatever beta 1, beta 2, beta uh, beta 1, beta 2 oh head you have. So, these uh, these parameter estimated parameters should have some you know sample properties means it should follow some sample properties that means it is it is through blue theorem so best linear unbiased estimators the moment you will go to touch this theorem properties then oh, by the way you will get all these informations okay so that means so here you need variance of beta 0 head okay this is known as variance of beta 0 head then you must have variance of beta 1 head then you must have variance of beta 2 heads, okay? variance of beta 2 heads. So, corresponding to variance of beta 0 head, you must have standard error of standard error of beta 0 head, okay? then standard error of uh, beta 1 head, okay? then standard error of standard error of beta 2 head. Okay? So, for corresponding to standard error, so you need to have calculated uh, T called T statistics T beta 0 head T beta 0 head okay. then this is T beta 1 head. Okay. So, this is T beta 2 head. Okay. This is T beta 2 heads. So, now uh, after getting you know this T beta 0 head T beta 1 head and T beta 2 head are represented as a, a calculated T statistics. The moment you have calculated T statistics 
so then as usual you have to compare with the tabulated statistic with the you know uh, with the uh, available sample information and you know uh, uh, with respect to the degree of freedom because the degree of freedom here is depending upon the uh, sample observation and number of parameters in the system since in this particular in this particular setup so here's uh, uh, here the representation degree of freedom is represented as a n minus k so here n represents number of sample number of uh, means sample, sample size number of sample num, uh, okay it's better to put sample size okay this is sample size and k represents number of parameters number of parameters in the systems or you can say number of variables in the systems so that means in this particular sequence or in this particular uh, problem uh, means in the trivariate structure k represents 3 k represents 3 k represents 3 means since uh, there are three variables in the system or three parameter three parameters involved in this estimation process so now with the help uh, on that means uh, uh, the number of parameters uh, uh, number of parameters which is represented by k is known to us in this trivariate setup so we just uh, we have to just check it what is the sample size so with respect to sample size and with respect to degree of freedom we can have the tabulated statistic with di different level of pro pro different probable level of significance so accordingly we are in a position to justify whether particular uh, item is statistically significant or not for instance again we have to go for this you know one tail test or two tail test uh, right tail test or you can say left tail test like this okay so this is how we have to receive this <coughs> means we have to compare this setup so let us assume that this is the critical region this is accepted regions this is accepted regions so as usual so this is the origin so now if you go by you know two tail test then you know this side is minus and this side is plus so now we uh, we like to have first tabulated statistics so let us assume that this tabulated statistic is 1.96 a and this is minus 1.96 a so now so uh, now with this particular tabulated value uh, sorry calculated value and then you have to locate where it, uh, where it can be possible to set so now uh, this is rejected region so this is rejected region and this is also rejected region so this is as usually you know very similar to bivariate analysis the only difference is here uh, uh, the uh, uh, you know uh, the matrix format that is 3 into 3 orders where in the bivariate format it is in the order of 2 into 2 so that is why it is a little bit complex and the formula is a little bit different to vibrate but the structure setup is almost all same so now the moment you have then you just locate it you corresponding you know beta you know more or less because sample information is same means obviously this you know significance uh, this tabulated statistic value will be more or less same so you have to just check it what is the calculated value of beta 0 head beta 1 head and beta 2 head that to t statistics so now you represent accordingly so now if if it is coming this side or this side then obviously you have to reject this null hypothesis that means before you go for you know calculating all these t statistics then you have to set the hypothesis that null hypothesis that the beta 0 head equal to 0 beta 1 head equal to 0 and beta 2 head equal to 0 then we have to reject the null hypothesis that beta 0 is not zero it has substantial or significant value which can build the you know build the fitness of the models or that fitness of the model can be you can say used for forecasting or policy use so now uh, so uh, what we'll do on, in the next step so we'll take a simple examples then we have to go for this particular testing so whether this you know uh, means what oh, how quickly we can have this or we can check the significance of the parameters for trivariate modeling and in the same time how is the setup and structure of this uh, a ANOVA that is analysis of variance uh, since we have no, uh, no time now so this particular process will do in the next class with this we have to conclude this particular session thank you very much have a nice day